This use update is brought to you by Grab somebody and tell them hello. It's Wednesday, November the 4th, 2015, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. We begin with news that the bidding war for control of Banks Holdings Limited is now before the law courts. Yesterday, the Trinidadian conglomerate Ansa McCall sought and was successful in getting an interim injunction until November the 11th, blocking the sale of the local beverage company. A release from Ansa Makar late yesterday evening said the injunction, which was granted by Sir Marston Gibson, and that's the Chief Justice, at 6 p.m., blocks any further trading of BHL shares on the Barbados Stock Exchange or otherwise. It also means that until November the 11th, no one will be allowed to solicit or negotiate the purchase or sale of BHL shares. Now, the company's statement further explained that with the injunction, Ansa McCall Barbados Limited is now free to contest the 2010 agreement made between BHL and SLU Beverage Limited in the interest of all shareholders. The much-anticipated Employment Rights Tribunal hearing for 97 retrenched National Conservation Commission workers has hit a snag, which has forced its suspension. Queen's Council Pat Cheltenham, who had been appearing on behalf of the employees' representatives, that's the National Union of Public Workers, had earlier said he was no longer in a position to continue at this stage. However, sources close to the tribunal told Barbados today that arrangements were in train to get another Queen's Council, Roger Ford, to take over. But when contacted last night, Cheltenham declined to say what prompted him to withdraw his services. However, he emphasized that there was no falling out with anyone and he had since given it second thoughts. Nevertheless, the hearing, which was scheduled to continue on Friday, remains on hold as a new date has yet to be set for its resumption. Barbados yesterday signed an agreement with the European Union under which the Brussels headquartered international grouping will invest $9.1 million to develop the local energy sector under the Barbados National Indicative Program. Speaking at his official Elara Court residence, Prime Minister Francis Stewart told reporters that the money which will be disbursed under the 11th European Development Fund, or EDF, would help support the government's energy sector goals as defined in the draft 2013 Government of Barbados Energy Policy. Complementary to this will be a capacity building program for educators on renewable energy and energy efficiency. It is anticipated that the financing agreement relating to the sector will be ready for signature by early 2016. Under this program, 3 million euros have been allocated to the sector. 150,000 euros to support civil society, 200,000 euros towards technical assistance to support or accompany the programming, preparation, and implementation, and 150,000 euros to support the Office of the National Authorizing Office. Meanwhile, considered the world's largest public financier, the European Development Fund has given the investment climate in Barbados a thumbs up as it, its private sector seeks to pump millions more in the local economy in the coming year. Vice President of the EDF, Pin Van Balikon, who has been here holding talks with Prime Minister Francis Stewart and top brass from the Caribbean Development Bank, also said his discussions looked at the possibility of the European Investment Bank adding value to the Barbados economy and the rest of the Caribbean. We uh, highlighted uh, three, part, uh, three points about our engagement in Barbados, increased lending for climate projects in the region, and uh, if we are trying to diversify the energy base, which is uh, quite important and sustainable.
sustainable energy base, of course, not uh, uh, fossil fuel based. We also discussed the diversification of the economy. The uh, uh, European Bank is uh, is not only an infrastructure bank, which is used, which originally was the, the mandate, but we are active in practically all corners of the economy. Uh, the investment climate in uh, Barbados. Uh, governance issues is excellent, so uh, there is no there is no uh, hurdle for the private sector to become more active in this country, and we are looking uh, forward to doing more business uh, in, uh, in many respects. In sports, Brazil's former football boss Jose Maria Marin has been extradited to the United States to face corruption charges. He appeared in court in New York yesterday where he pleaded not guilty. Marine was among seven officials from World Football's governing body, FIFA, who were arrested on, in Switzerland back in May. He is accused of taking bribes worth millions of dollars from sports marketing companies in connection with the Copa America and the Copa do Brasil. He could face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. There's regional and international news after this short break. Secure your future, be financially strong. Since 1983, we have been there for you. A smart range of products, great tax benefits. We're the solution to your hopes and your dreams. The Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. The Barbados Workers Union Cooperative Credit Union. Humble beginners to smart loans, smart savings. Welcome back with news from the region now. Today is D-Day for the people of Belize. They are heading to the polls this morning to vote for our new government. And the two main parties, the ruling United Democratic Party and the main opposition People's United Party, are confident of a victory as they bid for control of the country's affairs. The polls open at 7 a.m. and will close 11 hours later. The electorate will exercise their franchise at 393 polling stations across the country. Officials from the United States Embassy based in Belmopan and the Organization of American States will monitor the election where 88 candidates, including one independent, are seeking the nod from the voters. On the international scene, China confirms that its leaders will meet with his Taiwanese counterpart in Singapore this Saturday. This is the first ever meeting between leaders of the two countries. According to reports, the talks scheduled for Singapore will discuss relations across the Taiwan Straits. The Chinese government claims Taiwan as part of its sovereign territory since 1949 and threatened to counter any move to outright independence by military force. And finally, the Yazidis have joined in the fight to drive ISIS out of Iraq. More in this CNN report. The Yazidi Peshmerga fighters, volunteers, former soldiers, and a handful of trained officers looking out over the ISIS front line. He's pointing out to us all along here, you can see the defensive ditches that have been dug. He said they come as close as that valley, just there. They mortar, they fire on us, they eventually retreat, but it. It's pretty never-ending. This vantage point itself was in the not-too-distant past ISIS held. Just there, he said, you can see what they did to the Yazidis. The, the houses are completely destroyed. They slaughtered all the families inside. It really drives home how, how visceral this was. And that's where we end our Barbados Today morning news update. However, you can join us again this afternoon until then, remember to log on to www.barbadastoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. 
and Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.